We started yesterday understanding angles. We talked about the different kinds of angles. We also talked about how you can compare circles and angles. So we are in our ready book on page 296. If you want to get your book and turn to page 296, just pause it, go get it, and come back. All right, let's start on 296. So we're going to explore the idea. The measure of an angle is equal to the number of one degree angles one side has turned through. So let's think about that. There are blank one degree angles in a full circle. We talked about a circle in the other video. How many degrees are in a full circle? Well, there are 360 one degree angles in a full circle. An angle showing a full turn through a circle measures how many degrees? Well, we just learned the measure of an angle is equal to the number of one degree angles it turns. So if it's 360 one degree angles in a full circle, then the full turn would also be 360 degrees. Let's look at this example. The drawing below shows an angle that turns through several one degree angles. Use the drawing to answer problems four and five. So let's look here. This angle is broken up into one degree angles. The angle shows a turn through seven one degree angles. Through seven one degree angles. See, each one is one degree. The angle measures how many degrees? Well, if it was seven one degree angles, then the angle has to measure seven degrees. Have you noticed the pattern how if it's 360 one degree angles, it's gonna be 360 degrees because you're counting by ones, right? So if it is um, an angle shows a turn through seven one degree angles, then seven one degree angles is also gonna be seven. All right, let's try these. So an angle shows a turn through 19 one degree angles. What's the measure of the angle? Well, if it's shows a turn through 19 one degree angles, then the measure of that angle has to be 19 degrees. An angle measures 275 degrees. How many one degree angles does the angle show a turn through? Right, it's gonna be 275. Remember, we talked about how they're the same. Let's move on down. Let's talk about it. So, why is it reasonable to use the same units to describe circles and measures of angles? So think about it. If you start an angle at zero degrees, we're gonna say this line is zero degrees and turn, if I'm gonna turn the rays, all, this is a ray, let's see my dot, it's hard to color on here. Now if I'm gonna take this ray and turn the ray all the way around until it reaches its point again, what will it make? Well, let's say we're going to go all the way around. We turned it all the way around, and it's going to form a circle. So if you start an angle at zero and you turn it all the way around back to that point again, 
you're going to form a full circle. Let's look at number nine. Mary lays a notebook flat on a table and opens it as shown at the right. So here's the notebook. She opened it up just like you would yours on your desk. How many one degree angles did Mary turn the front cover through? Well, think about it. It's laying flat on it on your desk. You've opened it up. So it's lying flat. So it'd be like a flat line. So how many one degree angles did Mary turn the front cover through? Good. Be 180. So think about the angle formed by the bottom edges of the front and back covers of the notebook. What does the angle look like? What do you think it looks like? Would you think it looks like a straight line? I would think so. Looks like a straight line. Um, you could call it a straight angle. Remember we talked about that yesterday? Let's look at 10. A second hand takes 60 equal turns to make a full circle around a clock face. How could you find the number of degrees the second hand turns through in one turn? So think about it, okay? A second hand takes 60 equal turns to make a full circle. How many... Uh, degrees does it take to make a full circle? 360, right. A full circle is 360 degrees. So to find that, we would have to divide. So if we knew that a circle is 360 degrees, we could take that and divide it by what? 60, yes, because uh, we know a second hand takes 60 equal turns. So if we take 360 and divide it by 60, what do we get? We get 6. 6 degrees. Good. So let's look at it. A second hand takes 60 equal turns to make a full circle. Here's our 60. This is our clock. Takes 60 equal turns. How could you find the number of degrees the second hand turns through in one turn? So we're trying to figure out if it was a 360 degree circle and each time it turned, it went, it only went 60 times, okay? So to find out how many degrees each turn took, we would have to divide 360 by 60 to get six degrees. So each one turn is six degrees. All right, let's try it another way. All three sections of the circle are the same size. So we've talked about fractions and we know that this fraction is made up of three. So an angle shows a turn through one over what of the circle? It's just like when we shaded in our shapes to find our fraction. Instead of shading it in, it made one turn. So it made one of three. Good. The angle shows a turn through one hmm, of 360 degrees. Well, whether you're talking about the circle or 360 degrees, you're still making a turn of one third. The angle shows a turn through what? One third, yes. times what? Well, how, bit, how many degrees are in a circle? 360.
All right. So remember, when you're multiplying and it's a whole number, you can just put it over 1. And then you can multiply straight across. 1 times 360 is 360. 3 times 1 is 3. So, but this is my answer. I have to, now I have to divide. 360 divided by 3. So if I take 360 and divide it by 3, I'm going to get 120 degrees. So the angle measures, that's right, we just said it, 120 degrees. Good. All right, so let's try this one. Mr. Smith said last week Julia was against starting a recreation club at school, but now she has done a 180. Use math terms to explain what Mr. Smith probably means. Well, think about a 180 degree angle. What is happening in a 180 degree angle? The two rays extend in opposite directions. So Mr. Smith is saying that Julia started with one opinion, but then she changed her mind to the opposite opinion. Let's look at 16. Mark says that an angle showing a turn through one-fourth of a circle that is 10 inches across is two times the measure of an angle showing a turn through one-fourth of a circle that is five inches across. Is Mark correct? Well, let's think about it. So we have two circles. All right. This one is 10 inches across. And this one is five inches across. And remember, it's broke up into fourths. Let's break it up into fourths. All right. So Mark says that an angle showing a turn through one fourth of a circle that is 10 inches across is two times the measure of an angle showing a turn through one-fourth of a circle that is five inches across. Is Mark correct? Well, the lengths of the rays in an angle don't affect the measure of an angle. All circles, remember, have 360 degrees. So no matter the size, so one-fourth of any circle is 90 degrees. Look at 17. Which is greater, an angle showing a turn through one-sixth of a circle or an angle showing a turn through one-fifth of a circle? Well, an angle that shows a turn through one-fifth of a circle would be greater. If you divide a circle into five equal parts, each part will be bigger than if you divided the circle into six equal parts. So you could draw it to see that. Let's see if I can draw this. All right, I need one in fives. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, and this one is in six. Makes this hard.
All right. So this one's split into fives and this one's split into six. So if you can look, which it's hard to tell on my drawing, but if you look, one fifth of a circle would be greater than if you divided it into one six. One six would make smaller pieces. All right, so let's put it together. <clears throat> Use two. Let's look at the um, They want you to use cardboard. So if you want to do this at home, you can use um, two four inch strips of cardboard and two eight inch strips of cardboard and you can make your own angles. Um, it says two brass fasteners, but you can just use your fingers or whatever you want to do to hold them together. It says to make the angle explorer shown below. So these are our angle explorers. So if I use the 8 inch explorer to make an angle that turns through one fourth of a circle, then use the 4 inch explorer to make an angle that turns through one half of a circle. You can use the corner and edges of a piece of paper to help make the angles. Let's describe the relationship between the measures of the two angles. So the angle made with the four inch explorer is twice the measure of the angle with the eight inch explorer. Why? Because if I had a circle, and I'm gonna split it into fours, and it doesn't matter that this one is bigger, because remember we talked about it doesn't matter what size your circle is, the degrees are the same. It doesn't matter if my circle was as big as the earth or as small as a tennis ball. I'm still making a 360 degree turn around it. So the eight inch made an angle that turns through one fourth of a circle. So here's one fourth, right? Okay. And then it says the four inch explorer, which is smaller, made a turn through half of the circle. Let's say I'm here and I'm gonna go half of the circle. So if I do half of the circle, the angle made with the four inch explorer is still twice the measure of the angle made with the eight inch explorer. This is one fourth, this is one half. So we just explained how we found our answer. answer. The angle that is half of a circle is the same as if you combine two angles that are one fourth of a circle. The lengths of the rays don't affect the measure of the angle. All right, that's it for today. So when you get done with this, remember you have your practice book. Go to your practice book and I want you to work pages 303 through 308 all on your own. Good job, guys.